question from Michael. Dear Swarthy podcast host, my wife and I differ politically. I am a staunch conservative. She is a more classical liberal with some leftist positions. For example, she likes the idea of critical race theory, but hates the idea of big government. Okay. We typically have good civil debates. The main issue that we disagree on is abortion. I have pointed out that the low rates of rape and incest uh, related abortions, uh, but she counters with the idea that a lot of these go unreported due to fear of backlash. She has also pointed out that members of the military accidentally killing civilians in other countries go typically unpunished. Okay. Seems like a non sequitur, but okay. Ultimately, she says that as a man, it is not my place to tell a woman what to do with her body. But I say that it is not just the woman's body at stake. What are your thoughts on this, most specifically about the two argument, arguments I mentioned? Uh, your wife is just dead wrong, I'm sorry to say. And uh, it's your, your responsibility as the head of the household to show her that. First of all, if she considers herself a classical liberal, she really can't defend abortion. The reason for this, and you know, I'm not a classical liberal, I'm a conservative, but if you're a classical liberal, especially in the American tradition, then politics to you boils down to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Or life, liberty, and the protection of property. Well, you can't pursue happiness or have your property if you don't have liberty. And you can't have liberty if you don't have life. The, The right to life, according to classical liberalism is not just one right among many. It's not, you know, I have a right to uh, uh, go to the doctor or something. If you think about positive rights, the way people are talking about it today. Uh, And then I also have a right to life. No, the right to life comes first. And if you're talking about the negative rights of classical liberalism, you can't have a right to liberty without the right to life. So the the abortion, I I think she should change her position on abortion even even from that. As a matter of uh, critical race theory, it's just, uh, it's just poison to a body politic. I mean, there's no, because, because, you know, I I don't want to oversimplify it too much, but critical theory generally is uh, the theory to criticize. (laughs) It it goes back to Marx's famous description uh, of his plan uh, for the ruthless criticism of all that exists. Um, It's more involved in that. It goes even kookier than that, but that's what it boils down to. And so if you are keen on these kind of modern ideologies, what they all amount to is you've got to hate your country, your civilization, the way society is set up, you've, yourself, you know, you, you've, you've, you've got to, your religion, you, you've just got to hate these things um, because they're, because what you're engaging in is a, a radical criticism of them. Uh, so that's unfortunate. In terms, I don't really know what she's talking about with the uh, killing, killing civilians. I suppose that often is punished, even if it does go unpunished, doesn't really matter. Uh, and, and the rape and incest issue, I mean, that's, it is simply the case that uh, it's less than 1% of abortions. And by the way, before Roe versus Wade, we were told that thousands of women died every year from abortions. That isn't true, that the real number was uh, double digits. And it was statistically um, the same. It, when, you, when you consider how many states had legal abortion and illegal abortion, the number of women who died from illegal abortions was statistically almost identical to the number of women who died from legal abortion. So all those scientific arguments are bunk, but really you should get around the philosophical argument that it's just, uh, it's indefensible to uh, call yourself a defender of liberty and not defend life. 